Thanks for clicking. Canada's fixed mortgage rate shot up this month as the Bank of Canada raised rates at the beginning of July and bond investors continued to bet that interest rates would remain high for a long time. Yet, although some are arguing that real estate prices are tanking in some areas, Bloomberg notes that buyer psychology has yet to be broken, with buyers continuing to think that interest rate cuts are just around the corner, regardless of what the Bank of Canada says. What gave him that idea? It's what I wanted him to believe. Indeed, the headlines this month, even following the Bank of Canada's announcement and rising bond yields, appear to point to a market that could in fact keep on going, regardless of the skyrocketing mortgage rates that we'll see today. So what I want to do today is go over my best fixed mortgage rates for the month of July, take a look at how affordability has changed since rates started going up in May, and then go over Bloomberg's report on buyer psychology. We should have a better idea of the direction of Canada's real estate market post rate hikes late next week as the local boards start to release their data for the month of July. We'll obviously have updates out on that data on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates. But for now, let's get into these mortgage rates. First off, my best five-year fixed insured mortgage rate. An insured mortgage, if you'll remember, that's where you put less than 20% down. You qualify with a 25-year amortization at the contract rate plus 2% or five and a quarter, whichever is highest, and you pay the mortgage insurance. My best five-year fixed insured mortgage rate in May was sitting at 4.69. That jumped to 4.99 in June, and as of this video, is sitting at 5.34, with a five-year variable rate sitting at prime minus 1.05, or 6.15. So that's about a 35 basis point increase in the five-year fixed insured rate in just one month's time, and that's almost a 1% increase since fixed mortgage rates hit their 2023 low back in April, when a five-year fixed was sitting at 4.59%. And insurable rates shot up even higher this month. An insurable mortgage, if you'll remember, that's where you put that 20% down. You qualify at a 25-year amortization at the contract rate, the rate you pay, plus 2% or 5 and a quarter, whichever is highest, and you do not pay the mortgage insurance. My best five-year fixed insurable mortgage rate in May was sitting at 4.94. That jumped up to 5.34 in June, and as of July, is now sitting at 5.89, with a five-year variable insured mortgage sitting at prime minus 0.5, or 6.7%. So, insurable rates up over half a point since this point in time last month, and uninsurable rates are up as well. Uninsurable rates, if you'll remember, that's where you either do a refinance or an equity takeout, or you have a 30-year amortization. You qualify at the contract rate plus 2% or 5 and a quarter, whichever is highest. And of course, you don't pay the mortgage insurance. Uninsurable rates in May were at 4.94. They jumped up to 5.54 in June. And as of right now, are sitting at 5.89. With my best five-year variable uninsurable rate sitting at prime minus 0.4 or 6.8%. So we have five-year fixed rates up all across the board, with rates being, at least compared to the last 20 years, fairly awful right now. A salesman among salesmen. And as such, many buyers are turning to shorter term rates, opting out of the five-year fixed and going for one, two, or three-year terms. Right now, depending on the product, a one-year rate will sit at 6.94, with 5.84 on a two-year and 5.39 on a three-year fixed mortgage. So regardless of the rate type, mortgage rates are up about 1% since this point in time in April. But what about affordability? In April, the composite benchmark price of a home in Canada, the price of a home which represents the most popular set of features, was sitting at $719,800 and rose to $749,100 in June. Using minimum down payment requirements and qualifying at the 6.49% that buyers would have had to back in April, buyers had to earn $170,000 to buy that benchmark home. Fast forward to July and again using minimum down payment requirements but qualifying at 7.34, two points above the contract rate, buyers now have to earn $185,000 to get that benchmark price home. So with mortgage rates up almost 1% since April, buyers now have to earn about $15,000 more per year to get the same type of home. So the buying power is definitely slowing down. I can't believe that guy. But, says Bloomberg, a major decrease in buying power might not be enough to break buyer psychology. Bloomberg spoke to one home buyer who purchased her home in May, figuring that rates were at their peak and they could only go down from there. I can't believe that guy. Back in May, if you'll remember, we saw widespread headlines that housing had turned the corner. 
Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklin was saying that the interest rate hikes were working and inflation was coming down, and reporters were continuing to ask the governor how tight he was willing to squeeze Canadians. And while the Bank of Canada raised rates in June and July following that home buyer's purchase, the buyer noted that it won't be long before the bank does lower rates and that you can never go wrong with real estate. When you go home at night, you know you've made a difference. And this points to one of the biggest problems facing the Bank of Canada right now. Buyers don't think that these interest rates are normal. Buyers think that rates are going to come down, and as such, they are trying to get ahead of the game. They are trying to time the Bank of Canada buying now before prices go up once the Bank of Canada does lower rates. And this has led the central banks, has led the Bank of Canada to try to convince home buyers that interest rates can stay higher for a long time and that real estate prices can reverse. This has led the central banks to try to convince buyers of these propositions without having to raise interest rates much higher, without having to raise interest rates and indeed induce a widespread recession. Indeed, as we've talked about before in other videos, the Bank of Canada is in a bit of a dilemma. It, right now, is restricting demand vis-a-vis -vis interest rate hikes, but the minute it pauses, buyers think that lower rates are set to come anytime soon and flood into the real estate market. Breaking this psychology on the part of the Canadian home buyer, while also not raising interest rates too high that it causes mass sell-offs and a real estate crash, is going to be a very tall order for our central bank. And this is one of the biggest problems with job owning. When you talk the talk to try to convince the population to act in a certain manner, to try to get them to act as though interest rates are moving without actually having to move them, but then you don't follow through, then nobody believes you. When the central bank says things like interest rates will remain low until 2023, ridiculous as that was, when they don't follow through, they're the boy who cried wolf. And as such, a large portion of the Canadian population thinks that they can get ahead of the Bank of Canada. They think that regardless of what the Bank of Canada says, it will indeed have to cut rates sooner rather than later, and they're trying to get ahead of the game, which in turn will cause, has caused more rate hikes. With that said, as we saw today, the Bank of Canada is forcefully pushing demand down. They are forcefully pushing down buying power, increasing the amount of income required to get into the real estate market. Whether or not these last two rate hikes will be enough to pull enough demand out of the market remains to be seen, but we'll obviously continue to track Canada's real estate data on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.